If you were tuned into Sky after Tuesday night's budget, you may have heard me say that the budget was a, a vote of no confidence in the future of Australia. Now, to truly understand that, you need to actually look past the smoke and mirrors of the lucky surplus and the deceptively rosy economic forecasts. Now, before I do, though, congratulations to the government for delivering a likely surplus. I mean, it is something that no other Australian government has done for a decade and a half. I just find it disappointing that the surplus was, frankly, so pathetic. The windfall from resource uh, royalties and taxes should have been at least $40 billion. And instead, we're told to be grateful for a fraction of that, adding to our budget bottom line. But that is the best news in the budget. The rest is, frankly, downright depressing. There are billions of ha dollars in handouts for almost everyone, except for those people who are actually doing the work, who are building businesses and who are paying tax to support all of those who don't do any of those things. I mean, we've got more money for welfare recipients while businesses can't actually fill the available jobs they've got. I mean, it's so hard to get people to work in this country, the government wants to bring in more than a million migrants in the next few years to do the jobs that our current crop of Aussies simply will not do. And even their ABC inadvertently built the cat on the outrageous mentality at work. Well, actually, that should be not at work within the country. The 730 program profiled a couple of British migrants living on the Sunshine Coast. Now, they've been struggling on Centrelink. Mark Goodrick is a chef who says there's no point working full time. He prefers to read at his local cafe while enjoying a part time job at a service station, topped up by Centrelink payments, of course. And his wife, well, apparently she's well qualified for work, but she's on a carer's payment to look after their teenage daughter who apparently has autism. Now, that decision makes her eligible for close to $1,000 a fortnight in payments alone. Neither of these two have worked full-time since moving from Sydney in 2018, chasing a more affordable life. They've both got a car, their 15-year-old daughter goes to a private school, and they manage to spend around $350 a week on groceries. So I've got to ask, why are we, the people paying taxes, propping up the lives of people like this. And yet, anyone stating the obvious that having one million people on the dole, that's according to the ABC figures, while businesses desperately need workers is a disgrace, well, you're only, it's only met with abuse by the feral and, frankly, entitled left. And therein lies the problem for the country. So much of this nation has an entitlement mentality, it's actually destroying us. Alarmingly, it's been fed by our politicians who continue to throw more handouts towards those they deem worthy, regardless of whether they are or not. There are handouts for power prices, for rent, for just lying around, for childcare, for buying a home. We've got race-based handouts for education and medical care. We've got more handouts for doctors and even for billionaires chasing improbable green dreams. As I said, the only ones seemingly not getting something are the small business owners. You know, they're the people who risk everything so that others can actually have job opportunities. All right, I'll stand corrected. They do get some tax benefits, these small business owners, if they spend their own money to buy things for their business. Now, I actually support that, but I wonder why the principle isn't extended consistently through the community. I mean, why not provide support through the tax system rather than through a money churn of taking money from one taxpayer and handing it on to someone else? If someone isn't working, for example, why do we need to pay for their childcare? If government policies push the price of power sky high, well, aren't we better off in the long term changing the government rather than creating a catch-22 of subsidies? I'd wager yes. But in that space, and in so many others, unfortunately, there hasn't been much difference between the two major parties recently. And that's why I think our country is actually headed downhill. We've got too many people dependent on the public drip, always demanding more for themselves while seemingly expecting less and less prudence and responsibility by the government. So right now, the only thing propping up our economy is the agriculture and resource sectors. And if you can believe it, both are under attack by this government. With high taxes and charges, you've got red and green and black tape, and an apparent desire to make both of these important industries virtually disappear. It's all in the name of saving the planet from climate change, of course. And if you doubt that, 
let me point this out. The move is already on to limit fertiliser use, to destock cattle herds, to have us eat bugs instead of beef, and to stop live animal exports. I'll also point out we've got next to no diesel backup in supply in this country. And let me tell you, the entire supply chain runs on diesel. It'll be a long, long time before that changes. But of course, the rot here is deeper than a lack of planning or becoming a socialist welfare state. The attitude here is one of defeatism and compliance with crooked authority. I point out once again, COVID showed us how willingly people are to go along with the most insane demands. Now we're asked to accept fiction as fact in all manner of things. I mean, you know, the ABC is apparently unbiased and it's fully compliant with its charter. That's what we're told. You can change your gender on a whim and people have to propagate your pronouns even if they defy conventional English language rules. On a recent plane flight, there were even a bunch of weird cats known as furries. Yeah, these are the people who claim to be or pretend to be animals. Now, normal people shouldn't have to pretend that this rubbish is real. We shouldn't have to entertain these fools. And yet, you can be punished for misgendering someone or be sacked for using non-preferred pronouns, even if they do claim to be a cat. It's madness. Just like the idea we can attack the industries that support us financially, well, simultaneously building a welfare state which covers such a large percentage of the population. And that includes many who appear to have little interest in getting off whatever taxpayer-funded supplement to their lifestyle that they can find. Make no mistake, we're in a parlous position, and if something doesn't change soon, it could actually be too late to arrest the national decline.